Hello and welcome everyone. I am Amar and in this video I am going to cover 10 important questions on forensic toxicology and this is the part two, uh, three of the series and the topic that I am going to cover are removal of poison and antidote. So without any further delay, let's move to the next slide and all the MCQs that I am going to cover in this presentation are from the question bank section of uh, forensic toxicology and you won't find this MCQs all over the internet or any book because we have made it by ourselves and uh, those who have the premium access to our platform they just have to go to the forensic toxicology section and directly jump to the question bank section which is usually at the bottom of the page so if you are a premium member you can assess all these types of mcqs and we are going to cover around 1000 mcqs on forensic toxicology so make sure you check the forensic toxicology category under the question bank section and now let's move to the question one of this presentation question one says for injected poison what is the purpose of applying toracate above the point of injection so toracate is a bandage that is usually applied uh, to stop the blood flow through the veins and artery by compressing so it is an example of toracate it is a it is usually a bandage uh, so what is the purpose of uh, using toracate in case of injected poison so now let's check the option first so first to increase the absorption of the poison second to immediately stop all blood circulation third to prevent the spread of the poison and fourth to cause the gangrene as a side effect so the main use of toracate is to prevent the spread of poison that is option number three so the correct answer for this question is option three to prevent the spread of the poison now let's check the explanation part explanation says prolonged restriction should be avoided as it can cause gangrene so it can cause gangrene so gangrene is a situation where the death of the tissue cells occurs due to the lack of lack of blood flow so gangrene is the situation where the death of the body tissue occurs due to the lack of blood flow so it should follow the 110 rule means 10 minute restriction by the toric and one minute of relaxation so one should always follow 110 rule means one minute loose after each 10 minutes now let's move to the question number second question number second says which method is preferred for eye irrigation in the event of exposure to the contact poison now let's check the options so option first says the using of mild acid solution this can't be true because the ph of the eye the ph of the eye is close to the neutral so even the use of mild acid can irritate the eye and further damage it so the first option can't be correct now let's move to the second option washing with the soap and water this is also incorrect because the use of soap can further irritate the eye and it is not good for the eyes at all so second option is also incorrect moving to the option three immediate application of the eye drop so as you know eye drops are designed to relieve the irritation or the dryness of the eye but they are not intended to use it for the poison so the option three is also incorrect moving to the option four option four says flushing with the saline solution and this is the correct answer because the saline solution closely mimics the natural tear of the eye and it is usually the preferred method and it also gentle to the eye and doesn't cause that much irritation than the other three options so the correct answer is option number four flushing with the saline solution now let's move to the question number three the best method for the dermal decontamination after exposure of contact poisons and here are the options uh, option first says single wash with the soap and uh, this can't be true because as you know uh, while washing the soap is an important for removing contaminants or the poison but a single wash may not be sufficient to remove all the traces of the poison on the skin so single wash should be avoided moving to the second option that is triple wash with water soap and then water again and this is the correct answer because triple wash technique is usually used to decontaminate the dermal area of the skin in case of contact poison and this triple wash technique is also called resin resin leather, leather and resin technique so it is a three step process so it is a three step process and in the first process that is resin initial resin the water is helps to remove the bulk of the contamination so first resin is used to remove the bulk of the contaminants and the second step is the leather and in which a soap is used 
to emulsify the contact poisons and decontaminate the dermal area. And the third and the final resin uh, is used to wash away the remaining traces of the contact poisons for the soap. So they are used to remove the traces of the poison that is left behind for soap itself. So here are the three step process that is water, soap and water again. And this is the best method uh, to remove the contact poison from the skin. So the correct answer is option second, triple wash with water, soap and then water again. Now let's move to the question number four. Question number four says, gastric leverage is the most effective when performed within. And here are the options. First, one hour after ingestion. Second, two hours after ingestion. Third, four and six hours after ingestion. And fourth, 12 hours after ingestion. So what is gastric leverage? So gastric leverage is also called stomach wash, stomach wash, or stomach pumping stomach pumping so it is a procedure to remove the contents of the stomach after ingestion of poison or in a case of overdose of medication so gastric leverage is the most effective method in that cases so what is the effective time as you know when we consume something then it will first go into the stomach then in git and after that absorption takes place so in the stomach it usually sets for one hour so gastric leverage is the most effective up to one hour but it should be done as soon as possible. So the maximum effective time you can say is the one hour after injection. So the correct answer for this question is option first, the one hour after ingestion. Now let's take the explanation part. Explanation says gastric lavage is also known as stomach wash or stomach pumping. I already told you uh, the other names of gastric lavage are stomach wash and stomach pumping. Now we'll move to the next pointer that is the maximum effective time is within one hour. So the maximum time the gastric leverage is mostly effective uh, is up to one hour because the ingested substance will still there in the stomach at that time. Now let's move to the question number five. Question number five says for gastric leverage, what is recommended for use as the fluid in infants? And here are the options. First is saline water. Second is one is to 5000 KMNO4 or potassium permanganate solution. Option three, 5% NaHCO3 potassium bicarbonate. And option four is the 4% tannic acid. And the correct answer for this question is option first, saline water. And there are two main reasons why saline water is used uh, in case of infants. The reason one is that it can decrease the risk of electrolyte imbalance. So it decreases the risk of electrolyte imbalance. And the second main advantage of using saline water is it reduces the risk of fluid shift fluid shift and other three option that is the KMNO4 solution NaSCO3 and tannic acid these all are used uh, as a fluid in the adult cases and majorly used in a specific poisoning cases so for the application of gastric lavage in the infant cases the saline water is the best solution and the saline water is usually the 0.9 percent of sodium chloride in water so the correct answer is option first saline water now let's move to the question number six question number six says following are the types of antidote a mechanical antidote so mechanical antidote are the antidotes that are used to neutralize the poison by the mechanical action that is by mechanical action and it is usually by the absorption absorption and one of the common example is the activated charcoal. So activated charcoal is a one of the common example of mechanical or you can say physical antidotes. Moving to the option B that is chemical antidote. So chemical antidote acts directly over the poison and they usually done to neutralize. So they neutralize the poison either in activate the poison or they uh, convert the poison into less toxic substance. So less toxic substance. And the most common example is potassium permanganate, that is KMNO4. They are usually used uh, for the treatment of the alkaloid poisoning, such as from opiums. So option B is also correct. And option A, I already told you it is correct. Moving to the option C, that is the physiological antidotes. And this is also a type of antidote and in which they usually works by counteracting. So they usually works by counteracting or you can say that they compete with poison. 
and one of the common example is the chelating agents like edta so edta competes with the heavy metals such as lead copper cobalt etc so all the three options are correct so now let's check the option part so the answer a b and c that is option 4 is the correct answer now let's check the explanation part so mechanical antidotes and the one most common example is activated charcoal and they are usually used to treat the poisoning cases by strychnine morphine or nicotine and the second piece of antidotes are the chemical antidotes and the one of the common example is potassium permanganate and they are used for the treatment of alkaloid poisoning such as by opium strychnine or atropine or in the case of cinnamate Moving to the logical antidotes and the one of the common example is EDTA and they are effective in the heavy metal poisoning such as in such as in the case of lead, copper, cobalt, cadmium, iron and nickel. Now let's move to the question number 7. Question number 7 says what is the role of tannic acid in chemical antidote and here are the options. Option first says it acts as emetic. So emetics are the compound or substance that cause vomit that cause vomit. So Tannic is not a uh, uh, emetic, so the option first is incorrect. Moving to the option second, option second says it neutralizes acid, and this can't be true because tannic acid is itself an acid and it can't be used to neutralize another acid. But what can be used to neutralize acid are the bases, are the bases, for example, sodium bicarbonate. So option second is also incorrect. Moving to the option three. It precipitates alkaloids and certain metals and this is the correct answer because tannic acid tannic acid when react with the alkaloids or certain metals then it makes a complex that is usually insoluble that can safely be removed through the urination so the option three is the correct answer for this question now let's move to the question number eight albumin is used to precipitate which substance in poisoning cases so albumin albumin is a protein that is found in the blood blood plasma so it is a protein that is found in the blood plasma and usually used to bind with the heavy metals so they are used for the treatment in the case of heavy metal poisoning so heavy metal poisoning so albumin is majorly used uh, to decrease the free radical concentration of uh, heavy metals in the bloodstream so now let's check the options option first says alkaloids and glycosides option second says mercury chloride and option third says phosphorus and option fourth says both second and third as i already told you albumin is used to treat heavy metal poisoning so the option second that is mercury chloride is the correct answer and in case of phosphorus so in case of phosphorus poisoning then the copper sulfate that is cu so4 is used uh, to precipitate out the phosphorus from the blood now let's move to the question number nine the universal antidote is composed of which of the following constituents for its action so first of all what are the universal antidotes so universal antidotes are the antidotes that are usually used in the case when the ingested poison is unknown so when the ingested poison is unknown or there are the more than one poisons are consumed by the person so in that case, the universal antidote are used. So now let's check the options. Option first is powdered charcoal, magnesium oxide, and tannic acid. Option second says powdered charcoal, sodium bicarbonate, albumin. Option third says powdered charcoal, sodium bicarbonate, common salt. And option four says tincture, iodine, luminol, iodine, and common salt. So the correct answer is option first that is powdered charcoal, magnesium oxide and tannic acid and they are usually in the combination of 2 is to 1 is to 1. So the powdered charcoal has the two part in the universal antidote and the other one part is the magnesium oxide and the last one part is for the tannic acid. So the correct answer for this question is option first and the role of the powdered charcoal is used to adsorb the alkaloids is used to adsorb the alkaloid sites of poison and what does the magnesium oxide do that it is used to neutralize the acids that are present in the poison or in the unknown compound and tannic acid is used uh, to precipitate the metals that are present in that poison so all the three components has three distinct purposes to be a part of universal antidote moving to the last question that is question 10 the question 10 says the recommended dosage for the EDTA for heavy metal poisoning is and here are the options. Option first says 10 to 15 milligram per kg in water orally. 
ऑप्शन सेकंड 25 टू 35 मिलीग्राम पर केजी इन ग्लूकोज आईवी ऑप्शन थर्ड 25 टू 35 मिलीग्राम पर केजी इन 12 परसेंट इथेनॉल आईवी एंड ऑप्शन फोर 45 टू 55 मिलीग्राम पर केजी इन 5 परसेंट इथेनॉल आईवी एंड द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन सेकंड दैट इज 25 टू 35 मिलीग्राम पर केजी इन ग्लूकोज आईवी नाउ लेट्स चेक द एक्सप्लेनेशन पार्ट एक्सप्लेनेशन सेज ईडीपी इज मेजरली यूज्ड फॉर हेवी मेटल्स uh for example lead copper cadmium arsenic and mercury so edta are majorly used to treat the heavy metal poisoning so it is used for heavy metal poisoning moving to the option second that is edta must be administered intravenously even if the they are administered intramuscular injection then they are very painful so the best option is to do intravenously moving to the point of three that is edta binds And carry the elevated toxic metals and rapidly excrete it in the urine. So, what does the EDTA do? It first forms the complex with the cations of the heavy metal. So, cations of the heavy metal they interact with that and then excrete out through the urine. So, it is excreted out through the urine. But the press, uh, but the action of the EDTA is very rapid and in some cases it can also lead to the renal damage. It is lead to the renal damage. with that this presentation is ended thank you for watching till now and uh, i hope you have subscribed our channel and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and i will meet you in the next video thank you